sales data. Uh, you can see that uh, the Dow and the other averages are down, uh, down over triple digits now on, on the Dow, some of the worst levels we've seen. NASDAQ was up yesterday, it's down today, and the S&P, uh, which was basically flat yesterday, is uh, down a little bit. Uh, any of these uh, economic numbers are important uh, at this point. We'll see about the strength of the consumer in just a couple minutes. The uh, 10 year, as you can see right now, about 375. Uh, two year at uh, 4.66 or Xantelli. We'll have those numbers momentarily. He's at the CME in Chicago. Hey, Rick. Yes, good morning, Joe. Empire, a February read, one of the more contemporary numbers we get. Uh, expected to be minus 18, comes in multiple times better, but still a negative sign. Minus 5.8, minus 5.8. In the rear view mirror, minus 32.9 was the weakest uh, since May of 2020. So this is a nice reprieve. Uh, this would end up being the best number since November of last year when it actually was positive. Now, let's go to January retail sales. Probably the other side of the equation to yesterday's inflation data, expecting a headline number up 2%. And surprisingly, it's better. It's up 3%. And this is a pretty good number considering four out of the last six months have had negative signs in front of them. Uh, up 3% is the strongest number that we've had since October, which was the last time we had a positive number, which was 1.1. If you strip out autos, and by the way, autos also, uh, minus autos also negative four out of the last six months, expecting up nine tenths of 1% almost triple that, up 2.3%, up 2.3%. That is the strongest read. Boy, going all the way back to March of last, uh, March of 21, March of 21. So a very good number. And if we strip out autos and gas, also expected up 0.9, it was up 2.6. 2.6, and that's the best number uh, in that series also since March of 21. And finally, the control group, which is used for other economic data points up the economic food chain, so to speak, expected up 1% is up 1.7%. 1.7% is the best since January of last year, so let's call it a one-year high. Retail sales in all forms today is better than expectations, actually by quite a distance. We see interest rates, tenure was at th three and three quarters. It has moved up a bit, a basis point and a half or so. Uh, the pre-opening equities have had some volatility in the Dow futures to the downside, but they've come back to right about where they were, right around 34,000. And this, of course, has the negative connotations, Joe, that we hate to talk about. Bad is good, good is bad with regard to the economy. But no matter how you slice it, you know, yesterday's numbers were cooler than expected, excuse me, hotter than expected, but cooler than the last look. And today, pretty much everywhere you look, it is better than expected. So pricing pressures still historically by wider than uh, one year, still higher than most would like. And the growth going along with it still looks pretty decent, though pretty much every source I have looking at first and second quarter data, looking for GDP to be, as Steve Leisman put it yesterday, Today, maybe less than an integer. Joe, back to you. Talk to see. Yeah, you, basis point and a half. And I see you actually are right. We actually take it out that far. I could use a little bit. Can we get two more decimal places? I think would really, uh, would really give us more more insight into what's happening. Steve Leesman uh, joins us uh, now with more. How many? Would you like a few more base, uh, a few more decimal points, Steve? Or I think we're good here. You Three mean on GDP? Steve. No, 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 on, on the bonds, I was like, 3.77241, almost like pi. You go out 10. I've been, I, look, I, I, don't, I don't talk about my investments. I don't do much in terms of it, but, but I, I like the two year and the six month. Uh, those are, you know, better than losing your money, I got to say. Point you take it home. Six, eight, take eight, it home, now six, nine. Yeah. Take it home 470, 480, whatever it is. But, Joe, I want to talk about the gap, not the clothing store, but the gap between the Fed and the market, which at this moment, is at an all-time low of one basis point for the year-end 2023 contract. Uh, yeah. We have the Fed and the market right on top of each other at 512 precisely. So remember there was this 80 basis point gap between the two where the market was building in cuts. Those cuts are gone. They're yesterday's news. And more interestingly, on top of that, looking at where the peak funds rate is right now for the, it looks like it's the August contract, now trading at 529, and I want to give you one other piece of data on top of that. I just got to look it up, which is the probabilities for the June. We're now trading over 